Hi guys, today I'm doing a video that is kind of like one I've done pretty recently, but you guys seem to like that, so I thought I would do this one as well. The last video was my first boyfriend, which was like in grade school, but I thought I would do a my first relationship video. So this was like the real, the real deal. So I thought I would share this out. I really hope that the person who I'm talking about isn't going to watch this. That'll be so embarrassing, but we're just going to get into it. So at the time, I was... 16 years old. For that, I had had major crushes. I talked about this in my last video if you want to hear about that one. I was a very romantic kid. I always liked someone and thought, okay, I like this guy. We're going to get married. That was the way my brain worked as a kid. I obviously watched too much TV and thought just because you like someone, that means you end up with them eventually, of course. So I was definitely like that all through high school. I was a late bloomer. I was a very awkward looking high schooler. Braces, before I had ever dyed my hair and horrible skin like it was just it was high school wasn't a it wasn't a great time for me when I was 16 a junior in high school I got my braces off and I dyed my hair for the first time and I was feeling better I was feeling more confident I felt like I finally looked like how I wanted to look not the way that I was being forced to look with braces and oh it was horrible I guess I can start with how I met him I went to a regional high school which means that you have four different towns going to one high school so my town was quite small and the boy was from my town, but he was younger than me, so that's cool. Quite a bit younger. Like when I was a junior, he was a freshman. Yeah, I know, scandalous. This story makes me look so bad, but this is all in the sense of honesty. I was 16, I hadn't had my first kiss yet. I mean, I had a few random kisses that weren't, I wouldn't call them a first kiss. They were just like a, whatever they were. But a friend of mine, a close friend of mine, mentioned this guy to me and she was like oh he's a freshman he's cute like have you seen him blah blah, blah. i had no idea who she was talking about she brought him up a lot she would be like oh we talked we talked in the hallway or you know i i know him from like being living in our town i had no idea who he was she must have talked to him for a month before i even realized who he was she was very very shy and didn't know how to i guess like approach someone that you'd like and i guess she thought i had more confidence or something i didn't really have the confidence i just kind of didn't care that's kind of still how I think of it. I'm like, I'm not like full of confidence and like feel great about myself. I just don't really care. So she had had me request him on Facebook to see like what he was like or whatever and stalk him, whatever it was. And so I did. And he immediately messaged me, asked who I was, how I knew him. And I, I asked her, you know, this whole, this whole process, I was talking to her the whole time. And I'm, and when I say she liked him, she had a crush on him. She didn't know anything about him. She thought he was cute. At the time, I really didn't. I I had no emotion one way or the other. I was just helping out a friend. So he had messaged me and talked to me. I was kind of trying, trying to like bring her up in a way of like, oh, my friend this, my friend that. And I'm talking to her, pretty much showing her the entire conversation, telling her, you know, I, you know, I don't know that he's getting the hint. I don't know if he's liking you. And then he started talking to her when I finally kind of like pushed it far enough. And I talked to her the whole time, told her everything that we were talking about. He kept calling me pretty and giving me compliments. So I kept telling her that, like, listen, like he, he's clearly saying this to me. And she kind of assumed, I guess, that he was trying to make her jealous. And this is high school. Like, we're very immature. Like, just, like, be aware. This is not me now. This is 10 years ago. So they were talking for a while. But the whole time they were talking, he was still talking to me. But he was very clearly trying to talk to me and only talking to her to make me jealous when she kind of thought it was the other way around. I tried to clue her in, but I guess she didn't really want to get it. After a week of talking to him, she was like, oh my God, I really, like she was really into him. She was like telling me she was in love with him, which was clearly a thing that you do when you're a teenager, when you're not really in love. And then things went, went into a different direction. So we were gonna meet at her locker, all three of us one day, and they didn't plan that out, but they both planned it out with me. I'm pretty sure what happened was we all met there, all three of us were there talking and stuff, and then the bell rang, or it was time for someone to leave, and I think my friend, she left first. I don't know, it was just such a horrible situation. But so she left, and I was there talking to him, and he kissed me. And that was my first kiss. It was public, in the hallway, in front of a bunch of other people, and I remember thinking like, oh my god, I like him. Like, oh no, I'm such a horrible friend. And also, I think at the time, thinking back and like analyzing the situation, as I do, I know for a fact that the reason I liked him so much at the time was because he was the first guy that gave me, gave me attention. You know, before that, I was a loser. I was gross. No one liked me. Him telling me he liked me. Him telling me that I was pretty. And all this stuff that I never heard before from a guy. So, uh, I kept talking to him for about a week. Maybe not even a whole week, like four days or something. And then I told him, like, you have to tell her that you're not interested in her. You have to say something to her. You have to speak up because this isn't good like she's she's not gonna be happy with this like she really really likes you 
so instead of telling me he was going to tell her we could tell her together or whatever he told her she flipped out like she was so mad at me and i get it like i stole the guy she liked and i i know it was my fault like me and her had had a nice sit down later on a couple years later you know we talked about it and we got over it it was you know she liked him for a week and i think she got that and i got that and i felt bad and guilty and everything so at a time she didn't come to school the next day she was so mad she went around telling everyone i was horrible that i betrayed her took her boyfriend and it wasn't to that point i wasn't intending to do that and i made it so clear i felt like that he wasn't interested in her but i didn't really mind i was like listen like if she's gonna be so immature about it i don't mind losing a friend if this is gonna be my first boyfriend so me and him didn't talk for uh, constantly after that until the end of school when he lived quite close and actually like rode his skateboard to my house, texted me, and was like, come outside and, and like walk down the street. We talked on the street, he came over for the first time and like met my family. That whole summer we were dating and he was like my first kiss, he was my first everything. I was like so smitten. We were talking on the phone until like three in the morning and you know, just share everything. Oh, it was, it was like in the movies. It was like that summer in high school where you're just like so unbelievably happy. The thing is, I felt like I should have been the one that was like embarrassed because he was younger, but instead, he didn't want to be public, he didn't want to be Facebook official and that kind of stuff. And then um, he came with my family on vacation that summer in August. And then the night that we came back, I went over his house for a while and came back home. And she had, this was like right like a week before school started, and she had texted me saying something along the lines of like, I don't know, something mean about me and him. And I texted him saying like, oh my god, this is so annoying. And he was like, is it really worth like defending? And I was like, what? What do you mean? Is our relationship not worth defending to her? And then he pretty much was saying that he wanted to end things. And that a week before we, we went on that vacation, he had made us Facebook official. Like, and I think it said like engaged, which obviously wasn't true. So it was kind of like a joke, I guess. But while we're on vacation, I didn't have like access to the internet back then. It wasn't that big a deal. And he had taken us off being in a relationship together that whole time i had no idea like while he was there telling me he loved me all this stuff when we got back he pretty much broke up with me like a week before school started and i felt i wanted to throw up i felt terrible i was like what the hell so you just brought this on so suddenly apparently he had hooked up with someone else over the summer so that was super cool to know and i was like heartbroken i was so you're embarrassed by me you don't want to be with me at school in front of everyone and people know about it but you have no problem talking to me all night and like telling me your deepest darkest secrets and i was just super pissed and then my sister was going off to college like right before school started and i didn't go with my family to send her off instead i invited him over to spend the day together and this is after we had broken up and it was still like, I would have done anything for him. I would do anything he asked, pretty much. And then when school started again, we still technically weren't together. It was, I would do his homework for him. I'd write his papers for him. I'd do everything for him. Drive him to school once I got my license. It was just, it, it was a lot of me giving and me putting a lot of effort in. Me putting all the effort in and begging and crying and him just not caring and knowing that no matter what he did, I'd forgive him and I'd be okay with it. When we would have moments of like, where we technically were broken up I would try to move on or talk to someone new and he would say things like you're never gonna find anyone like me like and he would find the guy on Facebook and send me pictures like really this guy and um, it was a lot of emotional abuse I guess for someone in high school who thought they were in love and it was a very dysfunctional the entire rest of high school so my entire senior year was absorbed by this relationship I felt beaten down my self-confidence that had gone up so much from that summer had completely like 180 I was miserable but I didn't care I, I felt like someone on a tv show where the relationship is completely dysfunctional not working completely horrible but you would do anything for it anyway and that's kind of how I felt all through my senior year of high school and then that summer I tried to move on again and again wouldn't let me so it was just a very oh this was so horrible it was drama 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 lots and lots of cheating the summer before I had gone to college I was spending a day with him it was like a technical like our anniversary even though we weren't together the entire time and we spent the day together and I had found out that he had cheated on me with over 20 people in the year and a half that we were whatever we were. So I guess you couldn't call it cheating because like technically we weren't together, but we were together enough that I should have known. So I felt betrayed. I felt just so awful. I was pissed. But either way, I spent the day with him before I left for school, literally the day right before I left to move to college. And he, he finally kind of opened up and told me 
nice things and I was leaving to go to my car he had hugged me and like told me he was gonna miss me and I swear he was crying even though I was crying like the whole day but so I went off to school and tried to move on the whole time I was still in love with him I was 100% like head over heels in love with him and then something happened that made it completely go to shit even though it was already there so he had visited me once during that time with his friends and this was like, I want to say this is around my birthday so like October-ish like early October maybe it was even November I can't even remember. On my birthday, I think that year, he told me we were Facebook official. So we had been on Facebook again, like officially. And that's all I wanted from him kind of was like a, I know it sounds stupid, but at the time, I think all I wanted was some kind of like a, like a, like a gesture like that, that says you want to be with me like, publicly without being embarrassed or whatever the issue was or pretty much i think i think that i thought if if he made it public then other girls wouldn't want to be hooking up with him <laughs> he was hooking up he was like dating someone for a while while i was at school and he told me they had broken up and then we were me and him were back together and of course i just agreed i don't like what i just completely agreed of course he'd come to visit me and we hadn't i were had going out for like a, at a party and having a good time and then um, he left, like, we went outside to go on the phone or something, and I followed him, and I heard him say, like, verbatim, I swear, um, don't worry about it, I'm at a party at my brother or something like that, like, maybe not verbatim, but it was something along the lines of telling someone not to worry about where he was because he was with his brother, and the summer that we had started dating, he must have told me that at least, oh, I don't even know, like, more than a handful of times, like, telling me, don't worry, I'm with my brother, don't worry, I'm with my brother, thinking that because you're with your brother, nothing bad's gonna happen, and when I heard that, I knew he was talking to a girl, I saw that, and I, that was, like, the last straw for me, I kind of, I broke, like, my whole insides kind of, like, collapsed and fell apart, I was, like, it was, like, a movie, I swear, I was stoic, I had no emotion, my whole body shut down, I took him home, I took his friend home, he was such a dick about it, too, the whole time in the car ride home, playing every song that me and him ever had listened to together, pretty much, and then when I dropped him off, he pretty much was, like, it's been nice knowing you, and shut, slammed the door, I pulled a couple houses down, opened the door, and just, like, threw up, because I was disgusted by the whole situation, I thought we were fine, at a good place, I thought he was finally being honest and realizing that he once again was just lying and that he was with someone else. So I went back to my dorm and messaged a girl on Facebook and I know this is like a bitchy thing to do, but I don't really care at this point, like I'm so against cheating that I think what I did was right. Um, so I messaged her like a long ass message saying like, I wish someone had told me this about him when I first met him. Um, I know you can still do whatever you want, it's like totally up to you even if you believe me, but I just want to tell you the truth, like he told me that you guys weren't together anymore and he cheated on you. And so, of course, he was, like, so upset when he found out that I did that because I'm assuming she broke up with him. But she, all she did was, like, respond, okay, thanks, or something. And then he, t he called me the next morning, super early, freaking out, telling me to message her back and tell her I was lying. She's not that stupid. If I did that, obviously, she would think that you told me to do that. And of course I didn't. I was like, well, if you didn't want me to message that to you, you shouldn't have done it. And he was like threatening all this stuff. It was just like, it was absolutely insanity. So immature. Like, I had my neighbors at my dorm knocking on my wall being like, shut up, you're so loud. Like it was a screaming, oh, it was horrible. And after that, we hadn't talked for actually a while. Like the longest time we hadn't talked for since knowing each other. I was kind of happy with that. And then I moved home. A lot of other things happened at school. And I moved home and I didn't have that many friends around. Most of my friends were at school or away and he was still here. So I kind of went back into that whole, I'll keep hooking up with him and like hoping that we're together, but we're not thing. I was obviously still having feelings and um, I think I was more numb at that time. It was a good like, year, two years even, maybe not two years, like a year. A lot of on and off, like, horrible stress. A lot of, I think a lot of that like added to my anxiety. That's where I got mono from, was lovely. But so at that point, I think I was, I was in therapy at one point and I, I had come to this realization with my therapist saying that I'm still with him because I'm not hurt. He can't hurt me because he's hurt me so much that I'm numb to it. I'm so used to being hurt by him that no matter what he does, it doesn't affect me. And I think it made me feel almost safe. And I know that sounds stupid. It's like when people are in a relationship that's not working, but you don't leave because you're used to it. You're comfortable. You don't want to deal with change. And I think that's kind of where I was at. I was like, I don't want to meet someone else and date them and then have them cheat. That'll hurt. But being with him, knowing that he's not loyal, I have no, I have no emotion about it. I have no feeling. And that's kind of where I was at. So I had a choice to make. I could either remain doing what I was doing unhappily and just stay there numb or I could move on. So I cut him out 
completely, didn't respond to his text, didn't see him for like six months, and I needed that. Oh God, I need that. After like three or four years of absolute insanity, I needed that. I really did. And I think that that was the best thing I could do. I think if you are in a dysfunctional relationship like that, I think the best thing you can do is cut them out. And I'm not saying ghost them. Like if you have to text them, be like, listen, I'm not... I need some time, so just let me be and I'll reach out when I can. Or say anything, like I think he had texted me like five months later and said like, why do you hate me? And I was like, I don't, I just needed time to move on and I did and I got my time. And then from then on, I think we talked once in a while, we would run into each other out in town and I thought, okay, we're in a good place. I wouldn't call us friends, but we're friendly. It's not drama. A couple times throughout there, we did have quite a bit of drama of, you know, trying to be friends and then being like, well, we can't be friends, we have too much history. I think it finally got to a point where we were okay and then I had dated someone else for a while and then when we broke up I made the dumb decision of reaching out because I was in like a weird place of just being like in a breakup and I think it was a good way to say goodbye when we hung out that time and we had hung out for like three weeks on and off kind of and we knew we weren't gonna date and we knew we weren't really good at fr as friends either so we just kind of were hanging out and it was weird but it was nice it was like a good way of being like okay I think we both know we're not in a place where we should really be close friends and we should be hanging out like this and that's kind of like the way we said goodbye and since then we really don't speak we like maybe like text on snapchat once in a blue moon if like I posted something that looked really good but that's pretty much it and you know that was my first relationship and I think it definitely like, steered me in a weird direction when it comes to future relationships. I don't think it was the best first relationship to have. If I could go back, I don't know I would make the same decisions at all. I think the first time I found out that he was cheating, that first time he broke up with me before school started, I think I would have just accepted it and moved on and not been like trying to make things work. I think if, if you're in a relationship and the other person is clearly not putting any effort in, relationships aren't one-sided. They have to be both-sided. And I think that in order for a relationship to really work, both people have to think they're giving more. Both people have to be giving 60%. And I think that, you know, that you'd say relationship is 50-50, but I think if you are in a relationship, you should feel like you're giving 60 and the other person's giving 40. Both people should feel like that because then that way you're both giving a lot. And I think both people have to put an effort and that's like a big issue with a relationship, whether it's loyalty, communication, no matter what the, the issues are, there has to be effort put in from both sides. And I think that I didn't recognize that. I think I was just so blinded by puppy love and like high school teen love that I didn't care about any of the horrible things. And I did care, I just let it all go. I was in denial for sure. I think that it definitely ruined my trust trust for, for the future and it definitely hit my self-esteem pretty hard. I do think that though I'm grateful that now I know that though because you know that could have been a relationship later in my life where I felt like I was more wasting time not just in high school so it did teach me a lot. I learned a lot especially from that one relationship because there was so much dysfunction and fights and and not talking about things and you know one-sidedness and so much Ah, just so much that I learned so 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 much and I'm, I'm as much as I hated that experience and I think that I would have probably not wanted to relive it if I had gone back I appreciate everything I learned from it and think that if I hadn't learned from that and had that experience I wouldn't be the person I am today and be able to give relationship advice and be as logical as I am so I do think it's it's affected me in bad ways I think in good ways too so that was my first relationship. Definitely not as funny as my first boyfriend video. I definitely think that the way this relationship started definitely led to its failure, you know, finally. I think that because it technically started with cheating, he was technically cheating on my friend with me. Technically, I mean, I wouldn't put it that way really, but it was, it started with dishonesty. It started with lies. And I think that any relationship that starts with lies is doomed. And I knew that at the time. I remember even thinking it that first week we were talking and it wasn't even technically in secret. It was just, I felt wrong about it and I felt bad about it. And if I had just gone with that feeling then, maybe some things would have been completely different. So I think that just, just be aware. If you, someone could cheat with you, they, then there's nothing stopping them from cheating on you. If they have no problem lying to other people, then they have no problem lying to you. 
so just keep that in mind so i'm obviously completely moved on from it now it's been like four or five years since anything but yeah, i just wanted to throw that story out there maybe you can learn from my mistakes it's kind of like a dating horror story but i hope that you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up if you want more relationship stories and story times and stuff like that please let me know in a comment please subscribe to see more from me in the future and i will see you soon bye